Hi guys, in this video we are making the flower dream catcher earrings. Aren't they pretty? Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tiffany. I'm so excited for you to be here. I'm gonna show you how to make my flower dream catcher earrings. Aren't they pretty? All right, so this crochet pattern, I'm gonna say is an easy level crochet pattern. Don't confuse easy with beginner friendly. I would not say that these are beginner friendly. Now my advanced beginner crocheters, I think you could swing it. It might be a little challenging. We are working in rounds and that last round we are working fans or shell stitches, okay? But the most complicated part of this whole project is the fact that we are working with crochet thread. And crochet thread is very thin, it's very dainty, and it really likes to slip off your crochet hook. But if we're patient, you get the hang of the process of how to work with this crochet thread. All of a sudden, things are moving faster, smoother, it's easier, and before you know it, these things are just whipping out like crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. Now you can feel free to gift these sell these or make a pair for yourself. I really encourage you to make a pair for yourself though. We gotta make something for ourselves, right? Right? All right, so the terminology I use when I'm referring to the stitches is all US terminology. The dimension of these earrings from side to side is two inches wide or in diameter. The pattern for the flower dream catcher earrings you can find, there's a link in the description section and the comment section below this video. It takes you to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com. I have all of my patterns there. Just go ahead and click on that link, purchase the pattern, print it out, and be ready to crochet with me. Now you can make these earrings simply by watching the video, but you are more than like, most likely going to want to make two of them. <laughs> to balance out your earrings. And instead of having to watch this video over and over and over again, getting that pattern where I have a diagram, I have every round listed out with very clear instructions, it might be helpful just to have the pattern there instead of having to refer to the video over and over. But I'm gonna let you do whatever you choose. When you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make the flower dream catcher earrings. The materials that I used to make this flower dream catcher earring are all brand new materials to me. They were so much fun to use. Definitely a different experience. The yarn that I used is a crochet thread. That's right. It's a 100% cotton double mercerized crochet thread. First time using this, super excited to give it a go. I hope you are too if you haven't played with this material before. Now to go along with that crochet thread, I had an equally small crochet hook to work with it. Now this crochet hook size is a 1.4 millimeter crochet hook. I know, I know. I was actually super excited to use this crochet hook. I have not used crochet hooks with this small of a hook before. So the whole process, the whole experience was brand new for me. So if it's also brand new for you, we're in the same boat, you can do it, I promise. Now to give you a heads up guys, working with a crochet thread and working with a really itty bitty teeny tiny crochet hook is a different experience than working with a size four weight yarn and a crochet hook size five millimeter, okay? We get comfortable working with the size materials that we generally work with. Just anticipate you're going to need to go slow with this one. It might be slightly challenging, just holding it, working with it. It's very dainty. <laughs> so be patient with yourself and give yourself some grace. Okay, it might be a little more challenging, but once you get it, it's so beautiful and it's so much fun. Now to go along with just the regular materials, we got the uh, scissors, of course. The yarn needle I have two examples here. So this larger yarn needle that I have here is the one I generally use. It's the one I use for my yarn that I generally, all my projects, okay? So this is my regular everyday yarn needle. The yarn needle I used with the crochet thread is significantly smaller. It's actually so much smaller, I need to put it on my hand so you can see it because it disappears. <laughs> 
Honestly, I think this really small yarn needle is more of a sewing needle with a large eye for a sewing needle. When you look at the eye, it's longer than that itty bitty eye for a sewing needle. But the reason why I used something so thin is because the regular yarn needle was too big. I couldn't weave in my ends. You can give it a try if you absolutely have to for material sake, but our stitches are so itty bitty that the regular sized yarn needle, it just didn't fit. So I wanted to give you a prep on that. And then the earring pieces themselves. We're making earrings. So here I got two 30 millimeter hoops that we are going to crochet around. It's going to help give a structure for that earring circle for the dream catcher part of it in the center. It really helps to have these for that structure. It keeps it stiff. And then the two fish hooks here. And both of these are silver, but you can use whatever color that you want. I just chose silver. And then two of those silicone earring backings so that the earrings stay on. That is all that I used for this project. I will put links to everything you see here in the comment section and description section below this video. I know there are some specific pieces here, so I get it. I will put links to the exact place that I got mine so you will have connections to exactly what I'm using. Okay. So if you want to click on that link, purchase the item, have it shipped directly to you. You can do that out of ease and convenience. So you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, if you have stuff at home and you're ready to dive in, let's go ahead and get started making these flower dream catcher earrings. All right, let's begin. So taking our crochet thread and our crochet hook here, starting with a tail long enough for us to weave in the end at the end of the project, make it on the significantly bigger, longer side, just so that way you have enough to work with here. It's not a bad idea to have too much opposed to too little here. Create your slip knot. So I will wrap my crochet yarn around my finger so it has a loop, take the loop, go underneath, Take my crochet hook, grab that loop, and pull for a slip knot. Have it just right on the crochet hook so my crochet hook glides smoothly and we're ready to go. All right. So just saying this right up front, we're going to move slow. It's going to be different working with crochet thread. So do not anticipate working quickly here. Uh, you may lose the yarn thread off of your hook. It's possible working really fast that you'll do that. So try to be patient and again, have grace with yourself. It's going to take a second. It's going to be different. So we're going to start by chaining six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Slip stitch into the very first chain to close that ring or circle. We are working in rounds. Great. Chain two. One, two. That chain two does count as our very first double crochet stitch. Now we are going to make 12 double crochet stitches inside this ring. So 12 additional double crochet stitches inside the ring. Here we go. Circle. One, two, three, ten, eleven, twelve. Great. Okay, let's close this up by slip stitching in the second chain of that chain two we began with. So got to look close. One, two, slip stitch to close. Now, technically we should have a total of 13 stitches in round one, because again, that chain two counted as our first stitch. If you need the assistance of a magnifying glass, I completely understand. <laughs> I get it. Uh, so if that will help you, 
feel free to grab one and use it to see your stitches even better. For round two, we will start by chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So the first two chains are our first double crochet stitch, and then the last four chains count as our chain four. So everything is in this particular chain six is accounted for. Skip the next stitch right next to it. Find the following stitch. So we see this first double crochet. I'm going to skip it. Find the second double crochet. And I'm going to double crochet on top of that double crochet stitch. Double crochet. And then chain four. One, two, three, four. Skip the next stitch. Double crochet on the following stitch. Great. Repeat this chain four, skip a stitch, double crochet in the next stitch all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of round two to show you how we will close round two. So one, two, three, four. Skip the next stitch, double crochet in the following stitch. Okay, at the end of round two here, I just made my last double crochet stitch. I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and then slip stitch into the second chain of that six stitch, the chain six, to close round two. So looking at my chains, one, two, slip stitching here, because that chain two, the first two chains counted as my first double crochet stitch right? And then the last four was that chain four. So here, let me set this down, is what hopefully you're looking at. There should be a total of seven double crochet stitches or stitches attached to that center ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there we go. Okay. We just closed round two. We are now ready for round three. So at round three, we start or we attach the metal ring. So go ahead and grab that metal ring, place it down on the table. You'll see if you look at the top where we're gonna attach the, what do we call it? The fish hook part of the earring to it. I want the smooth side facing up. If you turn it over, you'll see that the other side is kind of indented. I don't want that side. I want the smooth side. And then I wanna pick up this ring and place it right behind what I'm doing. For round three, I'm actually going to be crocheting around the chain and around that metal ring, attaching the metal ring to the earring. So I'm kind of laying my chains on top of the metal, pretending they're one. All right, so let's begin round one. I'm going to start by chaining one. Great. Insert my crochet hook into that stitch I just slip stitched into. Then also insert your crochet hook into the ring just like that. Yarn over, pull that yarn through the stitch. And now technically I have secured the ring to the crochet project. Then yarn over and pull through two for a single crochet stitch. Yay. <laughs> okay. We have now entered in the chain four section. So again, try to lay those chains on top of the metal ring. Pretend they are one. We are going to make five single crochet stitches in this chain four section. So taking your crochet hook, entering it into the space right below the chains, all the way through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So there's one single crochet, four, and five, Awesome, okay, and then make one single crochet stitch on top of the double crochet stitch, and this will also go around the ring. So we're pretending all these stitches are right on top of that ring. So inserting my crochet hook at the top of that double crochet stitch through, yarn over, 
single crochet. Awesome. And that is how it's gonna look, completely covering the metal. So that's what we are repeating. Around every chain four, we are going to make five single crochet stitches, and then we will make one single crochet stitch in the top of every double crochet stitch. Repeat this all the way around until you get to the very last grouping of four chains and then stop. We want to leave one group of four chains alone, untouched, unworked, and you'll see why when we get there. So go ahead, repeat this all the way around, stop before you get to that last four chains, and I'll meet you there to show you what we do next. Right, so chain four section, making five single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, right? And I'll move the ring so that way I get that earring part out of the way. And then single crochet on top of the double crochet single crochet on top of double crochet right there perfect all right so we are going to leave the last four chains unworked we don't want to touch them because they are literally right in front of where that earring is going to connect there at the top so we're just going to leave that alone last round is round four here we go we're going to start by chaining one and then we're actually gonna turn our work or turn the earring, slip stitch into the very first stitch space. Awesome. Skip two stitch spaces, so one, two, or what you can think of is we are going to work this next six double crochet fan in the third or the middle single crochet of the five. So there'll be two stitches that are unworked, two stitches that are unworked, and we are working all six single crochet stitches in that middle stitch of the five. So here we go, yarn over. So where's that third? One, two, three, so third stitch. Double crochet one, five, and Six, perfect, okay, skip two stitch spaces and slip stitch on top of the stitch that is right above the double crochet. So one, two, slip stitch right above the double crochet stitch. And that's a great indicator. The fans, the six double crochet shells or fans that we are making should be right in the middle of the single crochet section. And then we are going to slip stitch on top of where the double crochet stitch would be. All right, skip two stitch spaces. One, two, six double crochet stitches in that third stitch space. One, oh, two, three, four, five, six, slip stitch on top of the stitch that would have the double crochet below, below it. And if you lose it, that's okay. Just go back. That's the beautiful thing about crochet is if we lose the yarn on our hook, it doesn't unravel, it doesn't come apart. We can just find that loop, reinsert our crochet hook into that loop and keep, keep going. All right, so that is the repeat pattern that we are going to repeat for every five single crochet sections. So we have one, two, three, four more sections to go, and then we are done. Go ahead and continue this pattern to the end, and I'll meet you at the end where we will tie everything off, weave in our ends, and we're done. Okay, and 
slip stitch into that last stitch there. Perfect, we're done guys. We have finished off our earring. So we just grab our scissors, cut a long enough strip here, yarn over, pull through the loop on our crochet hook, pull tight for a tie off, and we are done. So next we will just weave in our ends. I'm gonna start by going through the stitches, even if you have to go down to where the ring is, and I just want to make my way to the fan. Go through. And then I want to follow the stitches going around the fan on the inside there. Those, the inside of those six double crochet stitches. Just for the one fan closest to me and then double back. And that's my trick is doubling back to secure best. So skipping over the strand that my yarn is coming through, I'm gonna skip over that one and enter the one right behind it. So that way I'm not doubling back and just undoing all of the work I just accomplished. So it should catch right there on that stitch. Beautiful. Come all the way back and then exit through the top where I entered. Great, release my needle, grab my scissors and cut flush to the work. And there's one. You can go ahead and repeat the process for the inside tail, weaving that in, making it disappear. Great, so here is the front of the work. What we are looking at for our little flower dreamcatcher earring. We are next going to grab this fish hook. Okay, so coming to the bottom here where there's the loop, you're going to need to actually twist that so that way there's an opening in that little loop. If you have the tools there's little jewelry tools, pliers that you can do, but this is such a soft metal, you can easily bend it. And then the top of the earring here has a little hole. You will just have that metal go through the hole and then twist this metal back so that way it's secured. And there's your earring. And then you would grab that silicone little backing and attach the silicone backing to the tip of the earring and it is good to go. And then all you have to do is make one more for your pair. And that is how you make the flower Dreamcatcher earrings. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. That's how I made the flower Dreamcatcher earrings. Raise your hand if you're gonna make them. <laughs> I know sometimes we watch the video thinking, do I wanna get my feet wet, just put my toe in the water a little bit, watch the video, see if I really wanna make the project. I really encourage you to give this one a try. It's so completely different. Working with crochet thread, a completely different material most of us have never played with before. I know this is brand new for me. And for me, it was a bit challenging at first, but as I was playing with it, the smoother the process got, the faster things got, and the easier things got. So I would love to hear your experience with making your own flower earrings and just knowing how you felt working with that crochet thread. Let me know, love to hear it. If you liked this video, please do all the things. You know, like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my upcoming videos. <laughs> Check out my membership program. I got a couple different levels there that I think you would really enjoy and I would love for you to join. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today, spending time with me today. I always love hanging out with you. If you wanna keep it going, here's a playlist for you. Let's watch more videos together, keep crocheting together, spend some more time. I hope you have a beautiful day, guys, and I will see you with my next video. Bye.